Hi and welcome back. In this video we're going to see how to set up the required field validation tool for our contact form. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize Dreamweaver and come here to my desktop and you can see here's my framework folder. I'm going to go ahead and open that on up and I'm going to go into the Timothy framework folder and then finally into the JavaScript folder and plugins. And you're going to see a folder here called validation dash v2 and if you've downloaded the framework um, a little while back this file may not be there but you can go back to your download page and uh, re-download the framework and um, validation dash v2 should uh, be there for you Again, that's kind of a recent addition um, to what we've been working with and all I have to do is copy that and then go ahead and paste it into my Dreamweaver project folder here. Paste right there. Now inside of that folder you're going to see there's a CSS folder and a JSS folder, our JS folder as well as your setup instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and close that and go back into Dreamweaver here and let's take a look and if you don't see that folder show up again right away remember just hit the little refresh button right there and you should see validation dash v2 show up and we need to move both the CSS file and the JS file into the appropriate folder so I'm going to drag validate.css up into the CSS folder and I'm going to drag validate.js into the um, JavaScript into the JS folder. So all I should be left with now are just the instructions here. So let's go ahead and open up both the instructions, the validate setup instructions, as well as our contact form page. Now when we come here to our instructions we can see just some simple steps we need to follow. First is to add the jQuery library to your web page and we already did that when we added the jQuery.js file to our um, site. And the second thing you need to do is you need to add links to both the validation script and the CSS file that we just moved over um, into your contact page. And then step three you're going to go ahead and add this activation script and conveniently I've gone ahead and added all that information right down here so you can just go ahead and highlight that and copy it and then go into your contact page and paste it into an editable region. Now remember when we're working with Dreamweaver templates there's two different types of regions on the page editable regions and template regions template regions are the areas that are grayed out in your code right now because those are areas that are common to all of the pages that use this particular template. Editable regions are the regions that contain the custom information like the content for an individual page and we've seen that um, in a few different places. Now in the head section of your document you're going to have the doc title editable region and you can see here it's grayed out but it says instance begin editable name doc type and that's what we've placed inside of that region and then you have the end of the editable region after that but if you scroll down just a little bit more you should see Dreamweaver has also placed an editable region called head inside of your document and you should see instance begin editable head and instance end editable. And there may or may not be any blank lines between that, but you can very easily add some blank lines or you can just click after your title and put this code in there as well. But I'm going to go ahead and place it down here. You just need to make sure that it's in an editable region. And the reason for that is we don't want this script to be active on every single page in our website the way we would let's say the banner slider and the reason for that 
very simple. We've only got a contact form on this one page. Now, if on your site you have a number of forms for different reasons, let's say you have a contact form and a form maybe to sign up for a newsletter um, or other types of forms um, on your site and they appear on lots of different pages, well then that may be something that you want to add to the actual template itself so that it automatically appears on every single page. But we've gone ahead and we've pasted this into an editable region. Now, the only thing that you need to change here are, or the only things you need to check here, I should say, are the paths to your scripts and the ID of the form that you're attaching the validation to. So the easiest way I've found to do that is just to highlight the path type of including the quotation marks and then type a quote and use the browse function and just go find that validate.js file there and then I can come down here the same thing for the CSS file highlight it and type a quote click on browse and go into the CSS folder and it's like the validate.css file. Then you need to check your form ID here. Now the form ID that you place here needs to be the same as the ID for the form that you want to validate. And if we scroll down here a little bit, we'll see here's my opening form field my different attributes including the ID and in this case my ID is called my contact form and so I'm going to select that scroll back up and I'm going to replace form ID with the the actual ID for the form and remember you need the hash mark whenever you refer to an ID style you don't need the hash mark down here, but you do need it when you refer to it in CSS or in JavaScript, just not in the attribute. So now we've gone ahead and we've added that information, the script uh, and the activation to our page. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to add the validation attributes to whatever fields you want to be required. And you can see here what you're going to place on your input tags. Data validate equals required. So every time there's a required field you're going to place that. And again that should be on the input tag. If you have an email field, you can do the exact same thing, only put required in and then email. And you need to separate those or end those with semicolons, but we're going to put two parameters in there. So the name is required and the email is required, and it also requires that the email be in a valid email format. In other words, something at something else dot something. So we've gone ahead and we've added um, our information. I'm going to go ahead and save this and let's go ahead and open this up in a browser and let's see if this is working. I'm going to go ahead and click on full name here and hit tab and you can see that as I hover over these fields here, it's going to say, please fill out this required field, or please fill out this required field, and please type in a valid email address in the case of the email field. If I don't fill those out and I click submit, it's going to bring up a little tooltip here. It's going to say, please be sure to fill in these fields, 
and it's going to highlight those items in red. If I actually fill those out, you'll see they get the green highlight around them, indicating that everything is good with that. And that's all you need to do to add the validation script to your um, form. Now, this is um, a very simple validation script. It basically just allows you to do two things. Require that it, a field has a value in it and check to see if a value is a valid email address or at least is in a valid email address form. Um, there are a lot of other forms that you may require more extensive validation. You know, for instance, um, if you've got a date field that you want somebody to enter a value into, you may want the date to be between a particular range of days. Um, this script won't do that. If you're um, going to be doing any kind of validation beyond simple required fields or checking to make sure something is an email address, I would recommend that you use actually a form processing service. And the one that we use is called wufu.com. W U F F, or I'm sorry, W U F O O.com. And later, I'm actually going to show you in another video how to go create a form on that site and add it to your um, website. But again, for simple forms like what we have here, everything that um, the validation tool, um, the simple validation tool does should suffice. Um, it's only for longer, more complicated forms that you may need to use um, a service um, like that. Um, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.